The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Hi, I'm Kevin O'Flaherty. I hope you enjoy this Learn About Law video and podcast presented by O'Flaherty Law. If you need some help, please feel free to give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several locations for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Hi, this is Andrew with Learn About Law, and in today's video, we'll discuss Immigration Form I-485. We'll cover some of the individual questions and attempt to summarize the lengthy portions of the document. This video is not meant to be an all-encompassing guide to the form itself, but rather a simplified and condensed summary. If you do have any questions about the topics covered in this video or about immigration in general, don't hesitate to call our office. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So immigrants interested in applying for lawful permanent residence in the United States, uh, again, a green card, will need to complete Form I-45, which collects information about the applicant in order to determine his or her admissibility or denial. The information entered into this form should only refer to the person, <coughs> excuse me, person seeking the green card and not the petitioner. You can complete the form uh, on paper or via the computer, which is the suggested way to do it, as it allows for <coughs> easier corrections. Some lines will ask for information you don't have, such as a middle name. For these lines, it's best to leave the answer blank unless directed otherwise on the form. At, the time, uh, at times, you may also need to include more information that can fit in the space provided. So have extra seats of blank paper on hand and be sure each of these papers is attached to the physical form and contains your name, alien registration number if you have one, uh, the page and part number to which the item refers, and your signature. So we'll start with part one, information about you. This is going to be the person who is actually applying for permanent residence. So make sure you use the name on your passport unless it has changed since you received your current passport. Um, if any other names might appear on your paperwork, list those as well. Depending on your living uh, situation, you will enter one of three options for a mailing address. One, your current address. Two, the address of someone who will receive mail for you. Uh, that's going to be the in care, or in care of line. And three, if you are applying for a green card, due to being in an abusive relationship, see the alternate and or safe mailing address line. Under the place of last arrival to the United States line, the USCIS is typically looking for a place that you spoke with uh, the CBP officer. For most people, this will be the airport they landed at when they came to the US. If you're not sure, you can go to the I-94 website and search under the travel history button. Make sure you have your I-90 form, um, that's your arrival departure record number, card, or website available. This can be found stapled to your passport if you came before April 30th, 2013. If you came after, um, unless you drove from Canada, you'll need to look the number up on the I-94 website. You will need your passport number in order to retrieve this information. Um, status expiration in the expires on box. You'll need to enter the date that your status expires. This can be found on your I-94 I form or again on the I-94 website. And often it's going to be different from your expiration of your visa, so make sure you note the difference and put down what's appropriate. Some individuals such as students have a duration of status listed on their I-94 I form. In this case, uh, recording DS in the box is usually the best option. If you're unsure, again, speak with a qualified attorney. Uh, make sure you're clear in your description under current immigration status. Use simple words such as student or visitor, or use your visa designation if you have one. Um, if your stay period has passed or you enter the country illegally, it is highly advisable you speak with an attorney. Um, part two, so application type or filing category. For the underlying petition item, you're looking for the receipt number from the USCIS located on the 797 uh, approval notice. If this doesn't sound familiar to you, then you may need to talk to your lawyer or you might be filing your petition at the same time as the I-485. In this case, you would leave this item blank. Your answer for a priority date will depend on your situation. Immediate relatives and others in a category in which <clears throat> visas are immediately available are typically going to already know this information. If you're not in one of these categories, then you need to find a six-digit number on your USCIS approval notice. If you are a derivative applicant that is writing in on another person's petition, you will need to identify the principal applicant. Probably that's going to be a spouse or a parent. 
Part three, additional information about you. So items one through four in part three apply to those who have applied for a green card in the past. If you did, be sure to check yes under question one and fill in the information below. Record the application decision, approved, denied, etc. And don't be concerned if you were denied. There is no need to provide an explanation. Under items five through seven, you will list your address history for the past five years. List your current address first. And if there is not enough space to list all the applicable addresses, you can use the space under part 14, additional information. For items nine through 10, list any address where you have lived outside the US for more than one year. This information is used primarily for background checks. Items 11 through 18 are for employment history over the last five years. Fill it out as accurately as possible. If you have not been working, leave it blank. Items 19 through 22 are for employment outside the US over the last five months or five years, even if it was within the last year. Part four concerns information about your parents, including questions about demographics, mainly for background purposes. Fill it out to the best of your knowledge, and if one or more of your parents are deceased, be sure to answer deceased in the appropriate box. Um, under part five, we've got information about your marriage. So here you will list whether you are single, married, divorced, etc. This section is of particular importance if you are immigrating for or based on marriage. Be as thorough as possible, and if extra info is necessary, write it in part 14. Note that if you are married to more than one person, this could potentially pro, uh, pose a problem and should be something to address with a qualified attorney prior to completing the application. Part six uh, is information about your children. So you're gonna indicate the total number of children, including stepchildren and adult children. Be sure to list all their names as accurately as possible and include all children and stepchildren, whether they are immigrating now or not. If you fail to list any children and then attempt to immigrate them at a later time, you may run into problems. Then we've got part seven, biographic information. So the information you will enter into this section includes things like race, ethnicity, other physical information. This helps USCIS to confirm your identity. If you're not sure which box you should indicate, USCIS has a guide on its website that's easy to follow. Part eight, general eligibility and admissibility grounds. So this section is long and can definitely be a bit intimidating. However, as long as you answer truthfully, there should be no problem. This section is ultimately meant to weed out criminals, terrorists, and those who may do harm after entry into the US. If you are involved in any group that can be linked back to violence, even if it was a nonviolent subgroup of that original organization, it is best to seek the counsel of a qualified attorney. Conversely, if you were in or were, uh, if you are in or were in any support groups, religious groups, etc., you can list those here and the USCIS officer may look favorably upon your application. You will also need to disclose any arrests even if you were never charged or if you're proved innocent, it's not necessary to list driving tickets as long as drugs and alcohol were not involved and the uh, offense did not result in a fine over $500. Again, it's very important to answer truthfully here, even if it, the answer is yes to one or more inadmissibility questions, you should still answer yes. These are not immediate denials based on in, uh, inadmissibility and a lawyer can help you better navigate this section answer accordingly and explain your options. So again, filling out this form can be very intimidating and confusing. You don't wanna have your application denied due to a simple error or misunderstanding and a qualified immigration attorney can help ensure that the, you have the greatest chance um, of successful permanent immigration to the US. As always, thanks you for, uh, thank you for tuning in. Hi, Kevin O'Flaherty again from O'Flaherty Law. Hope you enjoyed our presentation of Learn About Law. If you need some help, please feel free to give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. If you found this helpful, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below.
click the subscribe button for new videos every week, and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizyourbusiness.com, and visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.